हाय फ्रेंड्स दिस इज के भरत फ्रेंड्स नाउ आई वेलकम यू टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ ब्रेन नाउ आई एम हियर विद इंट्रानोजल ड्रग डिलीवरी टू ब्रेन एन अप्रोच टू बाईपास ब्रेड ब्रेन बैरियर वी मैट हैव सीन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ड्रग डिलीवरी लाइक नैनो ड्रग डिलीवरी सिस्टम ट्रांसडर्मल म्यूको अरेसिव एंड मेनी टाइप्स पट्स most of the people might not have heard about this intranasal drug delivery in this presentation first i would like to tell you what view first i would like to talk on drug delivery how does this drug delivery works advantages limitations applications and then conclusion coming to the drug delivery now let us know what actually does the term drug delivery mean drug delivery is the movement of drug from the site of administration to the site of action at the right time and at the right dose if you want if we want to understand the drug delivery in a better manner it depends upon how best we understand the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics pharmacokinetics is just what a body does to the drug and pharmacokinetics i mean pharmacodynamics is what a drug does to the body mean to say whenever you take any tablet it will enter into your stomach and from there before entering into the small intestine it enters into your liver for undergoing first pass metabolism there our body that means the organ of a human body is making the drug to undergo metabolism so here what a body does to the drug is called as pharmacokinetics pharmacokinetics suppose if you take a paracetamol or a aspirin or any nsaids or a painkiller it kills our pain the mechanism of action of this paracetamol here is killing the pain or killing the disorder which we have so that is called what a drug does to the body so finally i would like to say that pharmacokinetics is what a body does to the drug and pharmacodynamics is what a drug does to the body yeah this picture shows us this intranasal drug delivery to brain is a targeted drug delivery because here we are directly targeting the drug at the point where we want the action so this intranasal drug delivery is very very useful for the drugs which cannot cross the blood brain barrier if you observe this picture easily then there is a nose to brain delivery direct delivery is there this del this delivery happens through the cranial nerves so we will know about the cranial nerves in a couple of minutes now how does it work how does this intranasal drug delivery work see now before going into the working let us know what exactly the blood brain barrier is blood brain barrier is one of the strictest barriers in our body whose cell wall is 100 times thicker than the normal cells so it is it allows only lipophilic substances but it doesn't allow any hydrophilic substances this blood brain barrier if you see pharmacologically it allows lipophilic and it doesn't allow hydrophilic but if you see through anatomy and physiology it is the one which separates the cerebrospinal fluid from the blood yeah now direct contact so as there is a direct contact from nose to the brain through the olfactory lobe which is the first cranial nerve out of 12 cranial nerves we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves out of 12 pairs the first one is the olfactory lobe which is mainly responsible for the smelling or faction now why intranasal delivery so why is it why only intranasal delivery intranasal delivery because the drug which could not cross the blood brain barrier can be easily delivered by using this intranasal drug delivery so the main motto of this drug delivery is to bypass blood brain barrier so i would like to remind the first point which i have said in the starting of my presentation that is the approach the main approach of this presentation is 
to bypass the blood brain barrier which is unfortunately blocking the hydrophilic substances let's see this picture so this picture is the one which explains all the concept of this intranasal drug delivery suppose whenever you take through oral administration the drug enters into the intestine and from intestine it enters into the blood and from blood it enters into the cns but there is a blood brain barrier here you can see the blood brain barrier so there is an obstruction if the drug is hydrophilic it cannot cross if the drug is lipophilic it can cross this happens when we take the drug through orally that may be either capsule or uh, tablet but think like this if we take through parenteral administration the drug directly enters into the blood and from blood it enters into the cns through this blood brain barrier again there is a blood brain barrier here so if the drug is hydrophilic then it can it cannot cross the blood brain barrier if the drug is lipophilic it can cross the blood brain barrier suppose think like this we have an implant so by using implant also we can release the drug directly to the cns but this technique is an invasive technique invasive means we are harming the skin we are cutting the skin here so that's an invasive technique but we have another technique also intracerebral ventricular delivery which is also invasive by which we can keep the drug directly in the cns where the where drug is released from the doses form into the cns in a, in a larger amounts but this technique is an invasive but if you see the nose to cns come on if you see here we can we can have a clear if you take the intranasal administration the drug directly enters into the nose from nose the drug directly enters into the cns where there is no blood brain barrier you can see here clear, clearly there is no blood brain barrier here but here you, you we have the blood brain barrier so the main advantage of this intranasal drug delivery is the direct contact of nose to the blood brain barrier i think you have got the concept of my presentation now let us see the advantages what are the advantages of this intranasal drug delivery see it is a non invasive rapid and very comfortable if you see this picture the child here is not accepting the injection see friends whenever the child is sleeping we cannot wake the child and we cannot wake up the child and give the injection because children do not accept the injection but this is intranasal drug delivery there is no need there is no problem this is very comfortable and we can inject the mist or any aerosol formulation into the nose directly and no modification of drug is needed the best example of this no modification of drug is needed is parkinsonism in parkinsonism disease we give the dopamine like levodopa because dopamine itself cannot cross the blood brain barrier so we use through levodopa there we are modifying the dopamine into levodopa isn't it we are modifying it but my dear friends by using the centronasal drug delivery we need not to modify the drug we can give the drug as it is i mean hydrophilic drugs can also be delivered through this intranasal drug delivery and targeting cns is the main important here and reducing side effects we are not allowing the drug to circulate all the body so there are more chances for reducing the side effects now here you can see the blinking one no first pass metabolism no first pass metabolism occurs because we are not allowing the drug to enter into the liver so directly we are giving it the way the drug goes most amount of the drug goes into the cns of course some amount of drug also enters into the lungs but whenever at at the at severe conditions when there are no lipophilic drugs when there are hydrophilic drugs which are having better action then we can use this intranasal drug delivery now let us have a question do we really need intranasal drug delivery it is a fair and important question to ask whether we need the intranasal drug delivery or not i think in order to meet the requirements of a patient or in order to meet the requirements of a body parts the drug must enter the at the site of action and it should satisfy the patient so i think this intranasal drug delivery is very very essential for the patients who are suffering from cns disorders alzheimer's disease spinal cord injuries and different disorders now let us have the challenges see the first one is effective targeting and the next one is improved efficacy the next one is side effects and product life extension 
Next one is patient complaints and biological degradation. Coming to the first one, effective targeting will be there and cost effective. So here we are using very low much concentration of drug. Next, improved efficacy will be there. Side effects will not be there. Reduced side effects and, re and product life extension. There is no proper, I mean, uh, there is no full metabolism. And patient compliance and biological degradation. So patients will feel very satisfactory and there will be no biological degradation. Coming to the limitations. So for every for everything there will be limitations. Now let us see the concentration varies. So the concentration varies depending it depends upon different drugs. So different drugs will have different concentrations in the brain. Next nasal congestion. Congestion means accumulation of blood. So whenever the patient feels with the nasal congestion, then we cannot give the drug through the intranasal delivery. And anosmia. This is the one of the majorly adverse effects of this intranasal drug delivery because the patient, whenever he takes the this, whenever the patient takes the drug through intranasally, he cannot smell like the normal person. That means the receptor, the smelling receptors might might have been damaged. So anosmia is the better, I mean, uh, is the one of the worst adverse effects. And partial degradation. So there are some drugs which have partial degradation in the nose. So the, those drugs cannot be administered. Coming to the applications, delivery of protein therapeutic agents. So protein therapeutic agents can be delivered and delivery of DNA plasmids. This is very, very useful in the biotechnology in order to deliver the vaccines directly to the CNS and delivery of small molecules, drug delivery based organic pharmaceuticals like uh, propranolol which is a beta blocker, non-selective beta blocker, estradiol, nitroglycerin which is used for angina and many things are there. Coming to the conclusion, finally I would like to conclude that intranasal drug delivery is one of the best drug deliveries among all the drug deliveries when the hydrophilic drugs are more active than lipophilic drugs. Suppose, let me tell you an example. Let us think A and B. Let us think A as lipophilic and B as hydrophilic. We thought that A as lipophilic and B as hydrophilic. Suppose, if lipophilic has less action than hydrophilic, then we should compulsory give hydrophilic. We prefer hydrophilic because hydrophilic is more active. But unfortunately, our blood band barrier is not allowing the hydrophilic substances. So, though the lipophilic drug is less active than hydrophilic, we should compulsory use lipophilic only because there is no, I mean, uh, blood band barrier is not accepting hydrophilic. But think like this whenever we have intranasal drug delivery, we can also deliver hydrophilic drugs also, which are having better action than lipophilic drugs. Mean to say, Whenever there is, uh, in, in the last conditions of the disorder, if the lipophilic drugs need modification, then we need not to modify the lipophilic drugs and we can give hydrophilic drugs as, as it is. This is the one of the main applications. No modification of drug is needed in the intranasal drug delivery. Finally, I will complete this presentation within a couple of minutes. This intranasal drug delivery is very good because here no modification of drug is needed, no first pass metabolism, reduced side effects. It is very rapid and very comfortable. And and four drugs now they are being marketed in in the US uh, like oxytocin, etc. So let us expect some of the drugs into the market and which will be very helpful to the patient. Lastly. I would like to say that I always believe in the caption, pharmacy saves your lives and hard work never goes waste. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my presentation and all the best.